All right, in this third video on creating DVDs in Encore, I'm actually going to start to create a DVD. So let's take a look at what we have done. We have downloaded some videos, some MPEG-4s from YouTube, and we have transcoded them to, to um, MPEGs. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say that these are my um, original, original trailers and just put those things away put those in another folder because I don't really need those and then maybe I'll say these are the renders so I know that I need those Oops, if I spelled renders right that'd be nice so I'm gonna take that those MPEG files and the XMP files and put them in that renders folder now the renders are not really or the XMP files are not really needed. I'm just going to delete them. You'll see that they get recreated. But you'll see that I've got my three um, DVD files. This is for the Mission Impossible Shame and Underworld um, trailers. And you'll see I've got my original MP4 files, which are much smaller files, but those are not going to be used. I'm just kind of organizing this stuff so I know what I've got and what I don't need to worry about. All right. Um, actually, you know, I might even call this trailers instead of renders because I'm going to have a renders folder later on. So I'm going to call that trailers. Now I'm doing all this stuff before I import it into Encore or anything like that. Um, I've also got another folder here called design assets because I've started doing some design stuff and we'll get to take a look at that in just a second. But let's go into Encore and just take a look at what we're going to be doing. Now, you might remember that we are going to be creating this DVD. We've got our menu here with three um, buttons, and we've got that going to a submenu with three video thumbnails, and that plays a playlist. Both of those will play a playlist of all three trailers. And then I'm going to go to a series of three menus with information on each trailer. It's kind of the extras section. So what we're going to need to do is create our menus. Now we can go and use some of the existing libraries to help us get started, which is kind of nice. If I go to the education libraries systems in Encore, I can see a bunch of different menus here. But I do want to point out one thing real quick, and that is we do want to make sure that we are using wide screen, not um, uh, HD in this case you'll see that's HD but we want widescreen and you'll see that one's 4 by 3 this one's 4 by 3 that one's 4 by 3 looks like most of those are 4 by 3 except for that one widescreen one which um, which is HD and that's not really what we want so I'm gonna go back to corporate and just take a look through these so that one that one's wide it says blue sky menu wide so and sub menu you'll notice those have the sizes that we want so what I could do is double click on one of these and bring it in now this just gives me a very simple menu to start off from now if you look at this and I go to layers you'll see that these layers um, are designed in here and they've got very particular naming conventions these suffixes these suffixes are absolutely essential and it is absolutely essential that you design these menus the proper way otherwise they will not work because these naming suffixes are what tell um, Encore exactly how to treat that layer and what that layer is for for example if I do um, something that is a overstate to show what something looks like then I'm actually using these different one and two highlights and that's what's really important is that those equals one and equals two highlights are being used for these button states so it's very important that we um, know what those are those happen to be using by the way the menu color sets that are used and you might want to look up a tutorial about menu color sets because I'm not going to cover those in great detail now what I am going to look at is how to design these Photoshop comps and where they're going so if I come back to my DVD Encore project and I go to my sample trailers folder and sources and menus you'll see that we have imported that menu into that sources folder that means if we wanted to open up this file in Photoshop we could double click on it here or we could even go back to this one 
right click and say edit Mo uh, menu in Photoshop and it will come up and it does the pixel aspect ratio correction because we are viewing it with um, the NTSC DV widescreen pixels this is what it would look like square and that's actually not correct so it would be that right there alright so um, you'll notice that we've got all of our layers here in Photoshop and so what we want to do is take these particular um, Photoshop comps and rebuild them keep the layers basically the way that you need like I know I only need three layers in mine so I'm gonna delete all but those I only need three in mine the corporate sky could be using something different I could double click on that and change it to um, a different text maybe bold and I'll call this trailers for 2012 and I could move it around I could rescale it do something with it alright there's something and then I could reorder these if I really wanted to I could al align them all to the left get that down a little bit get that there we go so now I'm gonna select all of those I'm gonna make them all equidistant I'm gonna align them all to the left and then I can move them where I want them to be now I know that resources is the bottom one so I'm gonna put it on the bottom because whoops that makes sense to me and I know that that one is going to be further away because the first two are going to be conferences and planning. Um, the conferences is actually going to be, uh, what is it called? Uh, play all. And then the planning, oh, there we go. Planning will be underneath that. Planning is going to go to um, the trailers. And then the resources is going to go to the extras. So let's go ahead and rename this stuff. Extras. That one will be um, trailers. This one will be play all. And I guess I'm not worried about the fact that it's spelled wrong right now. But I do need to go in and actually change this text. So that's going to be play all. and you'll see I've got the different um, colors here there's the uh, different highlights they've got some cool highlights where it has a um, selection around the entire thing which is kind of fun now I'll go into trailers and that will say instead of planning it will say um, that will be trailers and the last one of course will be extras Now, you'll notice that we've got this background here, and that background is not super exciting. So we'd really like to switch out that background, because if we ever even want to do animation with it, then we can't have everything flattened together because we can't animate with those. So that's one of the reasons I don't think that those backgrounds are great. I'm going to actually delete that background for now. Uh, well, maybe I'll leave it in there because it's always nice to use as a resource. There's some parts of it actually I could use. Like, I kind of like that that bar that goes across. But I'd like to replace everything else. Anyway, um, let's see if I can get something. Um, oh, that's the temp file. Let me go back to Tutorials, Encore Design Assets. I'm going to actually get rid of that original one I did. And I'm going to save that. Let's bring that over bring that in and now I've got myself a different background to be working with now because I downloaded an image and I'm it's kind of an organic image and I'm stretching it across it looks pretty decent but I'd actually like to use part of that so I'm gonna duplicate it and then cut out some stuff I don't need that right there and I don't need well that's actually not so bad I'm not super accurate 
but I'm going to just delete that little blue line that goes all the way across. There we go. Now we could do something like, oh, maybe add another layer that has a little gradient going down, or maybe even a little, has another box going down, and I could do something like change lighting on it, make it darker, make it lighter. I like multiply, that usually does pretty well. Color burn's kind of fun, but I think linear burn's going to work really well. Because there we, it's actually, you can see that effect. I'm going to put it below the background. You can see the effect, but it doesn't interfere too much with the overall design. So you can just see that you can replace your own layers and you can do great things with this. And that's what I love about starting off with these menus. Now, if I save this menu and go back to Encore, it will actually import it for me and it will have all the layers, the new layers there. Because it's called round trip editing. It means if you open it in one Adobe application, edit it, and go back, then it will recognize those changes have been made. Now, alternately, instead of um, bringing it in from your library here and then editing it, you might actually find these and bring them in yourself. And you'll find them in Program Data, um, Adobe, Adobe Encore, let's see, CS 5.1, Library. And if you go into these, like let's go into Traveler Technology, you'll notice there's an NTSC folder. And what I like about this is that there's a lot of videos that you might not realize that are actually there. And these videos are actually backgrounds, animated backgrounds that they've already created for a lot of these menus. Now what an animated background does is it replaces, if I go back, well let me open up a main menu, an animated background will replace the background layer of any of these backgrounds. Now it will not replace the, the layers that are on top. It has to be called background or even better, you can turn it off. If you turn off the visibility of it, even in Encore, then you'll be able to see a video playing in the background. So you can actually composite graphics on top of video in Encore. Now, you can grab some of the other menus that are here and take them out to your own project if you want. So if I know that I'm going to be using the gears menus, I could grab all of that and copy it. I just did Control C come back to my project and paste it in here and work on these things before importing them into my Encore project. Now I should point out though there's a major issue. Number one of course this is a 4x3 file and we don't want to be using 4x3 with this project only 16x9 but also um, this file if I I'm gonna go ahead and just save that just so we know it's been changed. And I'm not going to use these other elements right now because I know that we're going to replace these ourselves. So I'm going to just delete those. But if I go to import this, you'll find it gets imported into that same folder with the other um, menu. So let me import another one as a menu. And I'm going to come and find that design asset, NTSC gears, and now what you'll find is if I go back to that project, sample trailers, sources, menus, you'll see that it has brought a gears menu inside there. Now notice all these temp files it's making. This is just stuff that Encore does. Um, you don't really have to worry too much about it. I think when you close your menu then or you close Encore, then some of those temp files will go away. But it means that if you make a change to that original file, dun, 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 Encore, Design Assets, if I make a change in here and I add something, it's not necessarily going to reflect. I'm just adding something very quick. It's not going to necessarily reflect in Encore. In fact, you'll notice it didn't reflect at all. So it means that once you have imported something into your Encore project, you have to go back to Sources, Menus, and edit the menu there in order to have um, 
that then appear in Encore. So now I'll save it, close it, go back to Encore, and you'll see it's been changed, and then we can load that changed file. So um, you really only import it once, and then you go and use the other stuff. So it's very important that you organize things um, correctly first, um, so that when you import it, you import it right, or put it into your sources folder first and work fr from that folder for editing your Photoshop files. Now, I know we've been rambling on for a bit, but I want to point out there's a lot of other things that you need to learn about using these name conventions. And if you look for the Using Photoshop to Create Menus help for Encore, CS4, or CS5, you'll see some information on using these naming conventions for the suffixes. And it's very important that you use these because this is how Encore knows what that particular um, layer is being used for. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at actually using, um, what is it, uh, After Effects to create these Photoshop comps instead of using Photoshop itself, because there actually are some benefits that we'll take a look at. So that'll be the next tutorial. Let's go on to that.